Hey everyone, <clears throat> I think we're live. Let me know if you are watching and welcome. Get my camera on. Welcome to our live critiquing. It's a fantastic way to learn where I will be walking through uh, a series of photos telling you what I think you've done beautifully, things that you're doing really well, and helping you see some areas that could be improved to strengthen your photography. For those that don't know me, my name is Lou from Click Love Grow, where we uh, teach online photography courses and help women take photos that they love. I'm a mom of three. I uh, was a professional boudoir photographer for a number of years before starting and creating Click Love Grow, which is how you found us today. Now, if you're watching live, let me know if you can hear and see me okay. And let me know where in the world you are watching from. I'm just going to <laughs> jump on and make sure the tech is all working okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, yes. Okay, it looks like we are live. I'll wait until I can see that you guys can hear and see me okay. I'm going to pop this down here. Watch live here. Sweet. Okay. I think we're good to go. Um, let's see. Awesome. Hey, Lauren, listening from Australia. Hey, Emma. Uh, great to have you here, Emma. Hey, Julia. Thank you for saying hi. Awesome. Okay. So this is going to be fun. <laughs> I'm always trying to think of ways that um, I can jump in and help you improve your photography and also I wanted to give a little bit of a taste of what you get inside the Click Love Grow courses. Now I can see we have students watching um, from our advanced and our enthusiast courses and one of the ways I like to teach is not just through lessons, not just online, you know, things that you read um, or lessons that you watch. It's all about getting your hands on your camera, practicing techniques and getting feedback from someone who knows what they're doing so that you can be guided um, you know, get that feedback and validation about what you're doing really well, but also uh, get some, whoops, get some advice and help about the areas that you can improve on. That feedback loop is super, super important. Hey, Pam, great to have you here. Hey, Rebecca from BC in Canada. Hey, Brooke from South Carolina. Hey, uh, Ali Life, great to have you here. So, this is how it's going to work. Yesterday, I asked you uh, to share photos in the thread that we had on the wall that you would like feedback on. I'm going to pick five. Or I have picked five. <laughs> and we are going to talk through those. Hey, Karen from Florida. Great to have you here. Um, and so why do we do this? It's even if your photo isn't chosen, it's a great way to learn from looking at other people's um, images and kind of practicing that critical analysis. So I'm going to walk you through some tips today. Uh, but the other thing you can do is start to practice this looking at images, you know, with more of a critical eye. And when I say critical, I don't mean negative. When I say critical, I mean analytical. So you look at something, if you see a photo that you love, you know, an image that really stirs you, it could be a photo you see online, it could be advertising work, you could be watching a movie, the new crown is out, the way that they light in that movie, in that, that show, The Crown on Netflix, amazing. Um, but just say to yourself, why do I love this photo? How have they composed it? How are they using the light? What are the colors they're bringing into this? It's a really powerful thing you can do all the time to improve your photos. So let's jump over. I'm going to share with you the five photos that I chose. Uh, I also want to say thank you to everyone who shared their photos. It can be a little scary and daunting, right? Putting your work out. Uh, to be critiqued or analyzed by someone else. So, of course, one of our philosophies at Click Love Grow is about teaching through positive feedback and support. So, um, if you're a past student, let me know if you were a little scared in week one when you thought, ah, she's going to critique my photos. Um, that's normal, but we do it in a way that's uplifting and uh, provides that support. There are plenty of mean places on the internet uh, that teach photography in a really harsh kind of way. I've seen it, I've experienced it. It's not nice. Like, I don't care if people say in groups, oh, you have to have a thick skin. You know, you can't learn anything by being babied or told what's nice. I don't care what people say, right? You can absolutely learn through being uh, guided in a positive and uplifting way, right? It doesn't have to be mean. It doesn't have to hurt people's feelings. Uh, Lauren says, so scary, but Lauren, 
was it less scary <laughs> when it happened? I hope you say yes. <gasps> we are not one of those mean girls places on the internet, right? That's not what Click Love Grow is. Um, <laughs> And so I'm going to share with you uh, the photos that I chose. So big thank you to everyone who shared their photos uh, for critique to take part. Uh, and I totally respect that. Compliment sandwich. That's it, Lauren. We use the compliment sandwich. If you don't know what that is, something nice, something you can improve on, and we sandwich it with something positive as well. Uh, definitely helps you grow, grow, says Lauren. Absolutely. It really does. Okay. Uh, <laughs> So I could sit here and chat all day. So keep your eye out. Uh, obviously this video will be able to be replayed. We're gonna have more of these. So there'll be more opportunities for you to submit your photos. Let's share, oh, let's forget where all the buttons are. Let's share my screen. Okay. <clears throat> so here's our first photo that I wanna share with you. Um, Marion says, I'm nervous. <laughs> Rebecca says, I'm so nervous. I didn't submit a photo. That's totally fine. You will still learn a lot from looking at other people's, I promise you. So I really love this photo. It's from Eliza Rayner. And so Eliza has done a really beautiful job here. So this is, you know, it attracted me because the colors are really warm. She's caught those really beautiful autumn colors or fall, um, which it is in the northern hemisphere right now it's spring it's supposed to be a little bit summery here still wearing a sweater it's not so warm um I love the colors that you have in this it's really beautiful and warm the light that you've used is fantastic it's lovely soft light it falls really flatteringly over your subjects you've caught a really beautiful moment like it's really sweet the eye contact is engaging they're lovely and close together and also the clothes that they're wearing it actually complements all the tones really beautifully I love that you've gotten down low um, that's really key. So you've got that eye contact, but you've gotten down low. So the horizon area is, love is lovely here. And you know what else I love? Can you see how there's a fade from front to back? And I talk about this um, when we have our, our highlights reel each week. And I tell you why I love what, what I love. I love it when people include this foreground and there's kind of like a graduation from out of focus to in focus. Now having all these leaves on the ground and having that depth of field from front to back, it adds a lovely sense of depth to the photos. You know, photos can be really two dimensional because it's just an image on a screen. So there's a lot of techniques we can use to bring depth into a photo. So that's what I think you've done really beautifully in this photo, Eliza. What I will say is I think you know, and something that we can be really tempted to do is to place our subjects in the center. So you've placed your subjects in the center here. I think it would be a little bit of a stronger composition if you got rid of some of the negative space on the bottom of the image. So we don't need all this negative space down here. It doesn't add anything to the photos. Instead, I think uh, it would be a stronger composition if you brought your subject lower in the frame, really use the rule of thirds. It just works uh, in terms of creating balanced composition. So I think that would be um, something that would strengthen the composition. You could also bring them a little larger in the frame and that would um, work if you did that. The other thing is I think focus has fallen on their gloves and their faces aren't quite as sharp as they could be. Um, and so this could be something just like practicing, you know, using that center focal um, point is the most reliable or the strongest one to use. Um, or it could just be that you need a slightly deeper aperture so that you get, you know, both your subjects in sharp photos. They're not too bad, but I can see her gloves are really sharp. And so what's probably happened is the focus has fallen down here. And so by the time, you know, that that depth of field or that error in focus, it doesn't quite, um, it's not quite as sharp by the time you reach the girl at the back. So I would, so they're the things I would concentrate on practicing is um, focusing, maybe going a little deeper on your aperture so you give yourself some more flexibility and then compositionally using the rule of thirds. What again, I do love that you've done here is, um, you know, you're shooting at a nice cello aperture, which works for getting this beautiful blurry background and you've got all that great color in the photo. Um, in terms of post-processing, you know, I think the color could be a tiny bit stronger. So what I would just do is add a tiny smidge of contrast. That might be all that you need um, to do that, but it's a beautiful photo. Thank you for sharing it with us, our Raina, uh, for our, our um, first critique. Um, Claudia says, hello, took your beginner course and loved it. 
Um, awesome to have you here. Lauren, I don't know what the camera settings were for this shot, but if um, Eliza is watching, she can let us know. But in terms of exposure, the settings that you've chosen are great for this exposure. And many times that's what it is, right? It's the um, balancing the settings that you choose to get the result that you want. And so you balance your, um, your exposure. Beautiful shot. Yes, it definitely is. Okay. So let's go to our next one. Okay, this is another really sweet shot from Holly. I absolutely love his grin with his front teeth missing. So, so cute. Um, so Holly, again, has done a lot of great things in this photo. She has really sweet eye contact um, and a really sweet expression. So you can tell he's relaxed and um, she was obviously doing some fun things with him to get this photo. He looks lovely and sharp, which is great. He has lovely catch lights in his eyes. Um, and the light that she's chosen, the soft light that she's placed him in is really lovely and flattering for this photo. So a couple of things I think you could improve on in this photo, Holly, see how this area here is really, really bright. Um, so there's obviously some light behind that area. Now, what happens is when you have a really distinct change in key, so key is um, the, or in this case, it's a really bright patch of light. Um, it's quite distracting. Our eye comes straight to this area because that's the brightest part of the photo when really, you know, we want it coming to our subject here. So a couple of things you could do here, there's two options. You could turn yourself around. And so you're shooting from over here in this well, that's not way. Um, you're shooting over here in this direction. So, you know, if you turned him around just a little bit, he would have all of that shaded green behind him. And so the background would be more consistent. You wouldn't have really bright or shadowed areas, which is distracting. The other thing you could do is bring him up to the edge of this light. And if you just stood him on the edge of that light, the light would rim him beautifully. And that would give you a very different shot. But, and it would be, you know, bright behind him, but it would be consistent, right? Which would totally work. The other thing I'm going to say the same as the other one is it's really tempting or just easy to center our subject right in the middle, right? And so what I would do is come in a little bit closer, right, and crop it something like this uh, so that his eyes are in the top third of the frame. He fills the frame more. In this, at the moment, his head is quite small. I think it could be bigger in the photo for a bit more of a balanced composition um, because we don't need as much negative space that you have around the outside and use the rule of thirds, bring him a little bit higher. But I love this shot. The light is fantastic. It's a great time of day or you found a great spot to shoot in. The coloring is really lovely. Um, so yeah, it's a really, really sweet photo. Uh, Alison, which lens? That is a good question. If anyone is um, watching, so Eliza, if you want to let us know or any of the other people that um, whose photos I critique, let us know your settings and uh, the lens because people are always really interested to know that info. I might put it in the next one when we do the critiques, include that info because um, that can be really helpful as well. Okay, so this one is from Marion who just said she was nervous. So Marion, I did pick your photo because I think it's beautiful. I love the way that um, you posed your mama. It's a really natural, lovely position to pose her in. Um, I love the color that you've used. And I think that that color complements really beautiful with the natural um, environment that you've put her in. Um, the light and the time of day that you're shooting in is really fantastic. And again, she looks lovely and sharp. So what would I do? Or what do I think you could do to make this a little bit stronger? Um, again, the composition, you know, she's kind of placed here and she has a lot of negative space behind her and under her, which I don't think strengthens the composition. So, you know, for a maternity shot, you can get away with centering them, but I would, um, you know, aim to, oh, whoops, aim to uh, position her. So not necessarily prop this photo, but position her so that she is, say, um, you know, here in the bottom of the frame and they have more room up over here uh, because there's more room behind her than there is in front of her. And so when we're shooting a composition, we kind of want, if you look at me in the screen at the moment, um, if it makes me, that would make me too big. Um, you know, it's, you want your subject looking into the negative space as opposed to having negative space behind 
a subject. It doesn't compositionally make as much sense and it can just be a subtle thing, uh, but it does make a difference in terms of the strength of the composition. Uh, the other thing is I think that you could use a uh, more shallow depth of field. So take go for a wider aperture. You have this lovely scenery behind her, but if you blur that up some more by using your aperture settings or using a really long zoom, um, by doing that, you, you allow your subject to pop a little bit more and there'll be more separation of your subject from the background. And the colors and the textures you have here would photograph really beautifully. If she were um, shot at a wider aperture, like a lower f-stop number, you'd get that. The other thing I think you could play with here, you have this gorgeous light, which I can see over in the corner here. If you were to bring potentially her over into the edge of this light, you'd be able to get that beautiful glow rim light around her because I can tell it's a really beautiful idea. So that's something that you could play with as well. But overall, the color tones here are beautiful. In post-processing, you could bring the warmth up a tiny, tiny bit, um, but you have lovely uh, light on her face. I love the perspective that you've shot it at and all the colors work together here uh, really beautifully. So thank you for sharing that, Mary. Yes, it's yours. Uh, Emma says, it's gorgeous, love the pops of color on her dress and the soft honey light. Absolutely, it's really, really pretty. And you know what, oftentimes with photography, um, yes, it's attention to detail, that makes a really big difference, but quite often it's just little things that you can do differently that can really enhance your photo. And that's why getting you know feedback or finding out what those little things are can make such a big difference. Okay. So let's keep going. This is another lovely shot from Robin. Um, again, I love the, the color tones in this. It has a really lovely summery feel. Um, the eye contact is fantastic. Really, really sweet. And the greenery, so you've chosen such a pretty spot to shoot in. So just a couple again of minor things that you could do differently in this one. Can you see how on her face and even across her, there's quite a lot of dappled light. So finding the shade is fantastic. So well done there, Robin. One thing to keep an eye on is how that light falls on our subject. And if it's a little bit dappled, it can be a little bit inconsistent across our subject and can be a little bit distracting because there's little hot spots and you can see, you know, there's parts of her face that are in shade. Um, so what I'd probably do is just experiment moving her around a little bit, uh, maybe even changing your angles a little bit so that her eyes are more in the light. Um, just a couple of other composition points here again as well. You've got, a, again, a lot of negative space to this side of her, which is kind of behind her, which doesn't add to the composition. So potentially having her more over on this um, part of the image or, you know, just moving yourself around a little bit more could work in this. And then the other thing is just keeping an eye on cropping. Um, so we, you know, if we can avoid it, we just want to avoid chopping off fingers. Um, I don't mind where her legs are cropped. You didn't crop straight through her knees. So you did a really lovely job there, um, but just do watch fingers. So it could be stepping back a little bit or coming in a little bit more. So it's more of a purposeful crop. If we accidentally chop off fingers, it usually looks like it was an accident and we hadn't thought about it. So yeah, in this, I would just potentially step back a tiny bit, position her here a little bit more and just, you know, play with kind of your angles, see how the light falls on her and just keep an eye on that uh, that speckled light. Um, the other thing is potentially too in this one, you could shoot with more of a wider aperture so that you can blur out some of that background behind her. You can do that by using the low f-stop numbers or putting a little bit more distance between her and the background. When you have someone up close to a background, so if I had a wall like right behind me, which I guess I kind of do, <laughs> if I'm right in front of that wall, it's not going to be very blurred. The more distance I put between me and the wall, the, the blurrier it's going to get the same that's something that you can consider with your backgrounds having the background a little further away from your subjects and there's a few different um things that can affect you know how blurry a background is the type of lens we use how wide we open the aperture the length you know shooting with the longer focal length but one of the biggest things that we can control is the distance between our subject and the background so that's something you can think about there but lovely shot great job finding the shade um you know, really nice greenery. All the colors work really nicely together. Uh, fantastic advice. Yes, Lauren said, obsessed with rim light. Totally, rim light is really, really lovely. Okay, so, oh, whoops, pressing wrong buttons all over the place. <laughs> Let's 
uh, go to our next one. Okay, whoops. Here we go. So this one is from Kerry. And so I grabbed this one because I think this um, has a couple of great learning opportunities of things that lots of us do when we're shooting. Now, first of all, Kerry, she is gorgeous. I love the way that she is posed. Um, I love the way that the wind is blowing through her hair. There are lots of things here that you've done really well. Um, I think that you have chosen, you know, a good time of day to shoot. Potentially, you can tell the light is coming you know, the sun is lowish in the sky. Uh, I also love how you have created that separation from the background. So the background is nicely blurred. A couple of things in this particular photo. So the biggest one that stands out straight away is the light. And so, you know, it is great to shoot um, not in the middle of the day. I can tell this is not the middle of the day, but it's still when the light is quite harsh. Uh, something you've obviously considered is that you need a lot of light. It's really tricky to shoot if we don't have it, but I would say the lights are just a touch too bright. So there's a couple of things you can do in this situation. One of them is to turn her so the light is behind her. So in this case, this part of her face is really well lit, but this part is in complete shadow. Now, I actually really like the way that um, she has some shadowing separating her body, but in terms of a shot that includes, you know, eye contact and, and portrait, um, I don't think it's ideal to have half of her face in shadow. If this was kind of a creative arty shot and she was like looking away and we just had half of her face in the light and, you know, we had this really strong posing, I think you could get away with it and it would work. But for a shot like this, which is more of a traditional portrait, I think a softer light would, would work much better. So if this is the light you have to play with, I would move over into some of these areas in shade. Okay, so use that shade that's there so that she has even soft light over her face. Uh, waiting a little bit longer. So I can tell from the long shadowing, it's pretty late. I would just give it a little bit longer um, until the light softens some more. And then the other thing I wanted to point out is um, see how the line of where the horizon is, it cuts through her quite high. What I think is ideal is to have that horizon line a little bit lower. So what I would probably do is bring her maybe to, over to here even, because um, you've got this big, beautiful space to play with. I would bring her over here so that she's most of the background is the trees and the shrubbery. I think that would be more of a, a stronger composition than having the grass come quite high up and then the bushes um, and over here you might be able to find a little bit more shade to play with even if it's not that later in the day but overall it's a really sweet shot I love her expression I love the way that she's posing and moving I think it works really well for this age group um, but in terms of the soft light just looking at her face you know her eyes quite in shadow if we jump to a photo that does have soft light you can see the difference it makes in working with a light um, that's a little bit more flattering for a portrait subject. So there are five images today. Big thank you to Carrie, to Eliza, to um, Holly, to Marion and to Robin. I had to flip through them <laughs> just to make sure I didn't miss anyone's name. Big thank you for sharing your photos with us for our critiquing today. Uh, we will do this again next week. You are more than welcome, Kerry. Thank you for sharing your photo with us. Oftentimes, like I said, it's those um, small tweaks that can make a big difference. And even if your photo wasn't critiqued, you can learn so much um, from, you know, looking critically, and I mean that analytically, at other people's uh, photos and just asking yourself those questions. And um, let me know also, oh, something I was going to say is, um, Melinda says, great advice. Thank you very much for doing that. You're more than welcome. Uh, something that we can do if we're feeling frustrated, right? Or you're seeing other people's photos and think, oh, why don't my photos look like that? Look, I'm going to put my hand up as guilty and say that that has definitely happened to me in, whoops, in the past. Um, <laughs> in the, um, just coming back and screen. That has definitely happened to me in the past, right? In that process of learning, you get frustrated and you see other people's work and you totally get the FOMO. This is a FOMO combating tool. This is a tool to reframe those emotions that don't feel great. So just say to yourself, if you see a photo, instead of like hating on them, you can do it for like half a second. Just be like, okay, all right, love those photos, but where are my learning points? Like what light has she used? 
what does she compose? What are the color tones? What has she brought into the photos? All those things, like just switching that reframe in your, in your brain to looking at photos a little more critically and analytically will absolutely help you improve your photos. Now, um, obviously I think critiquing and um, getting that feedback is such an important way of learning photography, why it's such a big part of our courses in our enthusiast courses. Each week, as you try the hands-on lessons, you get critique in advanced course even more so because it really, really does help you learn. Carrie says, yay, I love live critiques. Uh, Lauren says, lots of great advice and tips here. Love this feedback from Alison. You are more than welcome. Well, thank you for joining us. If you want more tips and techniques to help your photography, head to clickleftgrow.com uh, because we have so many tutorials and different things to help you. Feel free to um, you know, leave any questions in the comments and I will see you all again online very soon. Have a good one. Thanks everyone. Bye. I always lose the button at the end. <laughs> see you guys.